Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo and today I am doing another one-off speed build and as you can tell from the title and thumbnail and whatever this is a pygmy hippo exhibit that I'm working on and as with some of my other one-off speed builds there will be a uh, well, link to the steam yeah steam workshop so there will be a blueprint there in case you want to use this for your own franchise or challenge or sandbox zoos then you may you can just uh maybe you wanna if you just here for the blueprint tune into the end of the video because i do have a few extra instructions on how you can uh implement this in your zoo because technically this exhibit it is two separate exhibits because i have yeah two separate exhibits for two pygmy hippos but uh because the steam workshop only allows you to put one exhibit at a time I uh, have to yeah, turn the two exhibits into one exhibit so I'll have a few extra instructions if you want to change it back into two exhibits or you can just leave it as one exhibit because I believe that satisfies the needs of the hippos fully but yeah I'll, I'll explain it in better detail at the end of the video but yeah anyway so to the actual speed build as you can see like I said I'm building two separate exhibits since Pygmy hippos are solitary, so they should be fine on their by themselves. Many zoos I've been to have had pygmy hippos all by themselves, so the only time you'd have them together is if it's a mother and a calf or you have a breeding pair. So fortunately Planet Zoo doesn't think the same. They think that uh pygmy hippos need to be at least in a group of two, which is it's it's not realistic. I mean you can't have them alone and it'll be completely fine, but whatever. Yeah, and so another thing is that I'm not entirely concerned with the... Like, I, I don't like welfare, the animal welfare in this game. Most of the time I find it unrealistic. That's why I play with welfare off. So, the, some of the plants I use, the hippos don't like. Like you saw, I was using some of the elephant grass, which the hippos, they're, yeah, they're upset with because uh, it's from the wrong continent, whereas in real life, it really wouldn't matter to the hippos on the plant. So... So yeah, I, I just I didn't take that into consideration, but I did uh, I max out the terrain so all the terrain is right. It took me a while because I had to remove all the short, like try and remove patches of short grass to get enough soil and rock and whatnot. But it actually is appropriate. The only uh, concerns maybe you have if you actually are worried about animal welfare is if there's not enough water, if you keep it as two separate enclosures, the hippos don't see it as enough water, but if you merge both enclosures into one, then yeah, it's enough water, enough space. And even with the wrong plants, the welfare is still pretty high for the hippos, so you can use this in your franchise mode and not have to worry about the welfare being super low. But anyway, as you can see, yeah, I'm working on some of... Uh, Vigal Pond here, the little lake that the hippos walk into, and it does have a cool underwater viewing section. You, you, if you are putting this in franchise, it might struggle a little bit to get the path in that little middle underwater section, but you definitely won't be able to get guests to use the full floor, floor space, but you can put a path in there and guests should walk around in at least part of it. You can see me struggling with the path a little bit to try and squeeze it in that space because the path really doesn't like being close to fences and that, unless it's a null fence, but yeah, those aren't, that's a glass fence, I had to have it hold water. Yeah, here's a really cool thing I like doing is uh, using plaster for my pools because a lot of cases in zoos, the pools that you have are artificial. I feel like especially for animals you have actively swimming, so like all hippo exhibits I've seen and a lot of big cats also crocodiles the pools will be this like it'll be an artificial pool the zoo put in they don't just dig a hole and let it fill up with water and no, they put concrete and to stop the water from draining out and then they can have a proper filter system attached to it it's I guess it's more important for animals that actively swim in the water so yeah so this entire the hippo pool Will be, I made out of these plaster, these plaster pieces, these off-grid, absolutely amazing plaster pieces. I think, I think you can see in this build, I, I pushed it to the limit because the entire pool is made out of these plaster pieces. And then, also for the nightroom build, you'll see I use a bit of plasters to make some windows and that. 
So yeah, I just added a little river at the end of the exhibit. There, by those rocks, there will be a waterfall, and then there's of course a big pool that the hippos go into. And I have some steps, obviously, so I can get in and out. And the hippos do actively swim in there, made it deep enough so they can actually submerge. Yeah, so I have another, I think there's like 10 minutes of me plastering this pool. I even cut, I think I cut some of it out because most of the, the build was just me putting down plaster pieces. Yeah, so it can get quite tedious, but I really like the end result. It looks like a proper artificial fake pool. So, pygmy hippos are the smaller of the two extant hippo species, hence the name pygmy hippo. Duh. And unlike the bigger African, uh, African, sorry, common hippo, pygmy hippos are solitary. They occur in the dense rainforest of West Africa, whereas African, the I keep on saying African hippos, common hippos are found pretty much throughout Africa in the savannas and grasslands, so you find them northern, eastern, and southern Africa. Yeah, and for that reason, or combination of all these reasons. Pygmy hippos are a lot less studied in the wild than African hippos. So while, like I said, African hippos have a much wider distribution, much more common, they're a lot better studied than pygmy hippos, how they behave in the wild. So not much is known of how pygmy hippos actively behave in the wild. Most of the information we know comes from captive individuals because pygmy hippos are actually relatively easy to breed in captivity. So many zoos and animal facilities have pygmy hippos and that's where most of the research is done. And also pygmy hippos are solitary unlike their common African hip their common hippo cousins. So that's also maybe another reason why they're harder to study since you don't find them in groups. To actually find an individual in West Africa it might, might be a little difficult, whereas African hippos, they congregate in big groups, easy to find those groups. Whereas pygmy hippos, they form territories, they don't, they're also shy, rainforest is very dense, and West Africa is not ex exactly super accessible for research to be done. So both species of hippo have similar behavior in that during the day they're in water bodies, so chilling in their pools, whereas at night they actively come out and go and forage for food so, but the difference is while African hippos are grazers they just go out onto the grasslands and savannas and just eat grass for the entire night before coming back to the pools in the morning pygmy hippos they can't really eat grass on account of being in the rainforest and having not that much grass so they eat fruits and ferns and pretty much it's assumed that all plants they can come across they can eat so which uh, leads people to believe that hip, uh, pygmy hippos have a better quality diet than African hippos. But I assume that because even though the quality is better, maybe it's the quantity that differs, which is why African hippos are so much bigger. And it also just may be that pygmy hippos have to stay small due to being in the tropical rainforest because it's a lot dense, a lot harder to move around. So you've got to kind of stay a bit of smaller size to navigate it easier. Yeah. Both of them do have these uh, these pre-made trails and these animals follow that they create kind of paths throughout the, the savannah or the rainforest. So yeah, if you're ever in a place that you know has African hippos, it's a bit, a bit scary if you're walking out through the day and you see these paths and you're like, oh, those aren't human paths. No, those are big old dangerous African hippo paths. But the real danger is at night because that's when they actively use the paths. Yeah, but back to the speed build, and see I'm building a shade structure to go underneath the underwater viewing area, or underneath, go over the underwater viewing area. And the color I'm using now is that, this, these light planks. I do change it up later on to be one of those more orangey planks in the game, or some, some of the planks, and you'll see that later on. I think I cut that bit out, but yeah. And you could catch a little glimpse of me using the... the circle technique to show how to make domes and circular structures so yeah, you just put a gridded piece there you put the well, what's it called a bit of a roof segment and then you can kind of rotate it around the gridded piece to create a cool little circular structure 
to, um, I didn't explain that quite well, but you can go back in the time lapse and see how I did it. It's quite self-explanatory if you look at it. As you can see, I'm fully um, plastering out the floor a bit more. I do, so it's yeah, fully plastered out pool. No natural um, like sand bottom or something. I really like how it looks. This fake look. And you can see I am messing around with the path a bit more because I had to change some of the glass. And I do add some drains, I believe, because yeah, it is important to have drains in case the zoo ever wants to drain out the pool, clean it out if there's an algal growth or something of the sort. So just simple drain using the wood planks, those thin wood planks. And it comes off really effective. And use an art piece in the background to create the blackness. So as for the night room, which I think I'm gonna get there in a little bit, I did take a already existing design I found on Zulex. That's a it's a website showing several designs of zoos and just concept art and final products of zoos and the architecture that they have. So as you could you could see some of the floor plan there. So I did take the floor plan of a I think a pygmy hippo and mandrel exhibit. It is an off What's it called there? Wait, let me find it. Yeah, it's just the off exhibit place, the night rooms for pygmy poses in Melbourne Zoo. So I just I copy that floor plan. I don't know how the actual building looks, but the floor plan is identical to it. I think I do convert one of the dens to a keeper hut, so it's a bit more functional in game. I will probably bring out the uh, the picture that I used in a, a little bit now. But also you can see me putting up the dividing walls, dividing both enclosures. So I have a little fence in between the pools. And on this upper ridge here, there's a there's a bit of a concrete or plaster wall. And I do add a plant in there because I decided just having the wall would be a little plain. I think I changed, yeah, I changed it out so that now I only have the plant at the end. But afterwards I change it so the entire wall is a big old planter. Yeah. Just regards to the... Nightroom. I don't completely show the time lapse of the Nightroom because it's doing interiors on time lapse doesn't come out so great. It's a bit all over the place, a bit all spinny, and can be a bit nauseating even. So, yeah, no time lapse for the whole Nightroom, but we do will have a walkthrough and I can show you everything because I do go do quite a bit of detail into the Nightroom. There's a pool for the hippos to go into, there's dens that the hippos can sleep in. So I, I think it really came out right, and because I was following an actual hippo exhibit that was made in real life, it's quite realistic, so yeah, you can see me making the gate with hinges and all. So you th that gate can be opened, I guess, if you want to combat merge both exhibits into one. So yeah, I think the time lapse is coming, well, no, actually it's quite a bit of time lapse now, so I don't have much to talk about, most of the stuff I'll... I'll show you in the real-time portion in a bit, but you can see me working a bit on the night house for the hippos and the foliage work I did off camera. I don't, I don't feel super comfortable doing foliage work on camera mainly because I don't know. I feel like it's a lot of me just looking at for plants and it's just stillness in the screen and also a lot of trial and error. So I'm placing stuff and deleting stuff. And I, I don't know. It feels like it just doesn't seem right in the time lapse. I don't feel super comfortable putting it in there. But anyway, yeah, I'll just let the rest of this time lapse play and then I'll speak to you again in the real time portion. <gasps>
Okay, and welcome to the real-time portion. Here's the finalized exhibit. We've got one Pygmy Hippo exhibit here and another one over here. So, And I put one in each. So let's just take a little tour of the place. I did use the same map that I made my Red Panda Dome with. Just kind of use it as a backdrop. Also added these trees on the side to use as a backdrop. But if you put this in your zoo, you can decorate the surrounding area however you want. Okay, so now we are in Tejit Cam and I can give you a guest view on the exhibit. So, start walking along here. We have some, we have a low wall. We can come in and see the hippo. I guess it's not really, since these are pygmy hippos, they're not African hippos. You can have a pretty low wall and guests can get quite close. Uh, pygmy hippos aren't that aggressive unlike the common hippos. So I got this. I put a few enrichment items down just to keep the hippos happy, keep the welfare a bit higher. I will show you the welfare stats later on. I got this, uh, I forgot what this is called, some kind of feeder. Just got the, what is it? The hanging grazer feeder. We got some sprinklers up there. I do have some scent, I think, scent enrichments hidden. Yeah, and some of the plants. Yeah, so the hippos' toy needs are all, and food needs are all filled up. These trees over here, these are custom trees by Mike Sheets. And I did decide to put some of the, this, what's it called, this tree cage around it. Stop the hippos from rubbing against the tree and damaging the tree. So yeah, that's that's something you often see in hippo enclosures for young trees. You have the tree cage around it. But for a bit older trees, like this tamarind tree back here, you wouldn't really need the cage. I don't know, uh, yeah, they're more established, so... The hippos don't damage them that badly. So let's walk along here. Here we have the underwater viewing area. And see I had to put some planters on the side because the path wasn't completely filling up this place. And we've got some lights on here. I'll show you the place at night. It actually looks quite decent. Got an info board on the hippos there. And here's the underwater viewing area. Oh and that guy just came out. It was really cool. We've got this cool artificial river coming through there. Some rocks. Yeah, so I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Yeah, he's, I think it's a she actually. She's going back up to sleep. Got a great uh, barricading both exhibits so they both keep away from each other. Yeah, I've got the other side, yeah. And we can see the hippos underwater if they were swimming yet. Anyway, let's get back up. And this is the second exhibit. Oh wait, there's a hippo over there. Let's see if we can actually watch him. Ah, I can't crouch down in this game, so I can't see the hippo properly. You know what? Let's go out of gadget camp. Yeah, we can see our hippo chilling in the water yeah so they do actually swim in this the water bit yeah, so as we carry along this way we get another view of the hippo and I added less, a little planter on the side here plants going around it, got some benches you can sit on and whatnot. got the barrel feeder, got a normal feeder also added some sprinklers and I believe there's a Scent enrichment somewhere, yeah. Scent enrichment over there, and there's this cool big tree here. I was initially meant meant to make this little section a staircase so the hippos can go up, but I really liked how it turned out that this is a little like kind of sleeping area. And the hippo does sometimes go underneath this tree and sleep there, so it's a really cool little shaded spot there. I like how they turned out, and we have a little we'll wait for them to get up back there. And that over there is the lighthouse for the hippos, which we'll check in a bit. So let's go around the back. Got a staff path there. Got the gate. Kind of gate there, the staff can't actually use it. And here we have a few doors, and this is the back of the staff area. So you can see I did add some small windows so you can actually peek into the exhibit. Oh. And I'm stuck on the roof now. Oh, thanks game. 
Yeah, so these these windows are made using the some plaster wall panels, as well as some wooden barriers and then a big glass panel there. So yeah, really nice touch. It's got some lights, like I said, we'll show this. We'll show this at night a little bit. Anyway, let's take a proper view of the staff area. So go, we got coming to here, we've got some switches so we can turn off and on the lights well. It gives the illusion you can turn on and off the lights. Yeah, yeah, I said I turned this area into a food prep station, so keepers can actually come and prepare food for the hippos. And then we've got a little board here noticing. We have hay storage over here. These are some of the thatch pieces that kind of it kind of looks a bit like bundles of hay. And we've got truck access here, so you can deposit it there and take it out. And here we have a few of our dens that the hippos sleep in. So they do actually sleep in here because you put the hay. Okay, well, this exhibit I have, yeah, I have the hay in the yard over here. So this hippo comes and sleeps here. But if you remove that hay, will sleep in this den here. Which the hippo on the other exhibit should demonstrate, so... I do have a few guillotine gates that the hippos can go through, so you can come through here, go into the den. And if you want to open between the two exhibits, you can open this gate, and there's a few to the den there. And a few more gates, so you can, if you want to, if the zoo needs to move around, the hippos around a bit. And I did also connect up the pulley system for the the gates, so and it all lines up, it all lines up along here. So kind of little panel you can open and close the gates with wall. It gives that impression that you can do that. It doesn't actually work in game. Oh yeah, and there's a window looking this transfer area overlooking this transfer area but yeah. Got another dead over here. The back. And here we have a big old yard for the for the hippos, so if ever we need to keep them inside. Fortunately I did want to have this closed off as a closed wall and then the hippos can only enter and exit through this gate but I had to include this door because the keepers need a way to enter the exhibit so yeah, there's actually keeper gates in this wall here if I leave this door and that you can see that's a keeper gate so the keepers have to enter through there and yeah, and then to get to the main exhibit, I have to walk through here because the game doesn't allow multiple habitat gates. Otherwise, I would have put one there and put one here so the keepers can navigate in between. But I, but I need this door because they can't crouch down underneath this this gate here. So yeah, got a yard. We got the pool in for them, and so identical mirrored setup on this side yard got a pool so if in a place where I guess if it gets really cold or you just need to keep the hippos away from the outside introducing them into the zoo you keep them in this place I don't think a zoo necessarily needs a big yard like this but I, I was like I said I was copying the design that I found on Zulex so it had this I thought it was really cool so I implemented it anyway let's go check the outside so yeah put a pool I put a few food troughs in that right here. We've got our river, our waterfall, and the hippo can come swim down here. In the pool. Really cool. And let's go check out the other side. So, water trough over there. Got some sprinklers up. A little barrel feeder. Oh, look at him. Pygmy hippos are adorable in this game, and in, in real life too. My guy, don't don't poop while I'm calling you cute, okay? Like I was saying, a baby pygmy hippo is the cutest collection of atoms in the universe, and you can quote me on that. And before I forget, let's look at this thing at night, because I did install a bunch of lights, so... Yeah, first I want to look at it at this cool at sunset because the game looks absolutely gorgeous at this time and I think the, the red of the building just helps amplify that 
see how we got the walkway lights up here and put some more lights down the viewing area and the lights on there open also but let's let's go full night now that looks in the in the proper darkness so yeah lights came out quite nice there lights on the wall light up this place quite nicely also got some lights on this side and the interior is fully lit up as you can see here so yeah in the yards I have the lights on the roof whereas in this area I put the lights on the wall because I don't know I wasn't too sure if it didn't look right when I put it on these speed so just left them on the wall each little den even has oh, sorry each little den has a light as well as well as the hay storage I believe yep hay storage got light as well so yeah that's the the area at night yeah so earlier I was saying you can download this off steam as its own blueprint but that was before I tried actually doing it so that does come with a few problems so what I did was I combined both exhibits to make it one I removed the habitat gate from over here and I moved a, a barrier piece separating this two and I just opened the gate so now you know it's all one exhibit and I can save it as a blueprint and the problem when I do that is see when I when it comes in this thumbnail preview version I can see this shelter over here and I can see the back of the exhibit but when I save it as a exhibit let's just call it give it a name and a description and what else we need in here tag uh, up like that blueprint when I do that and try and place it down the some of the structures as you can see are missing the middle this middle shade structure over here as well as the path and the little stuff I put on the side here is missing and the back of this enclosure unfortunately and that's just because the barriers weren't overlapping in these parts which really really sucks I'm really upset about that but uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna release this habitat on Steam I'll just release the missing parts so this building as well as the shade structure in a separate thing and then I guess what you can do is maybe delete that come in and then put this over here you just you're gonna have to try and Place it nicely. Uh, okay. Probably gonna have to remove this and this and this. There's a, there's a lot of problems that come with this. Funny enough, also the water in this pen has remained, whereas water there and water in the pool has completely drained. And that brings another problem where I don't know the game doesn't like to play with water properly so yeah so when you place down this blueprint you're probably gonna have to mess around with the leveling a little bit to get the water right I guess what you could do is place like an item like this kind of in line with the water level and then from there you can probably come in with your blueprint and line up where you want the water to be so I would assume you'd want it I think the other exhibit is blocking it now which sucks and I think you should be able to pop some water down now okay water still a bit it's overflowing a bit but you get the idea you just have to mess around with the terrain settings to get the water right yeah. and you can also take this viewing structure and put it in there yeah so it is a bit more work that you have to do to try and get this in your world it might not be worth the hassle but I guess if you want to appreciate the building then you can or you can just 
take this building and put it in your own pygmy habitat. Pygmy hippo habitat. It doesn't have to be with us necessarily. So yeah. But also one extra thing I want to show you. If you do want to merge these exhibits to be two exhibits. Because right now it is just one big exhibit. The hippos can move freely between that. And the benefit of that is welfare is almost 100%. Everything is almost 100. You have enough water. Plants are nice, pretty high. Enrichment is high. So that's very good for, I guess, franchise mode map. But as soon as you separate it into two exhibits, the one on the left here, I get, it gives a hippo up to like its welfare is in the 80s, which is still pretty good. But the hippo on this side, because there's not that much water, its welfare goes up in like the 50s. So probably best keeping it as one big exhibit but if you want to merge them back into two then what you want to do is just join the barrier uh, you want to move this fence rotate this fence back into position fine not to select the hinges but yeah so rotate this fence and just place it back there so the hippos can't move between Habitats. Uh, and also you want to add a habitat gate for this habitat. So probably there. And you might have to struggle around with the pathing a little bit to get it to connect everywhere. Like see a uh, problem there and kind of Boom, and it's connected. Yeah, staff can now move freely, so. Probably have to struggle with the pathing a little bit for that, as well as for this area underneath here. So yeah, if you want if you want to put this in your zoo then you can you can try and attempt it. Otherwise, thank you for watching this. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll hopefully see you in the next Planet Zoo episode. Bye!